Welcome back to Mock Draft Madness. This is day four, doing a mock draft every day until the real NFL draft. I'm Hunter with You Don't Know Ball. As always, if you don't know ball and want to know ball, be sure to subscribe. Leave a comment. Let me know your favorite and least favorite pick from this mock draft, along with trade scenarios in the comments so I can try them out in my mocks. Let's get right into it. So today, we're going to do something a little different we are going to have the bears trading back with the commanders um, just because i've had caleb williams go number one overall to the bears even though um, albert breer basically said yesterday that uh, caleb williams is a lock to the bears and rich eisen essentially said the same thing so we're just messing around with those scenarios here i think caleb williams will end up being a bear but yeah okay so here we go we're gonna force that trade through and now we got a pick swap so with number one on the board, the Washington Commanders are taking Caleb Williams. Now, this leaves the Bears in an interesting spot because my guess would be you're still taking a rookie quarterback. You could take the approach that you're keeping Justin, but with the way that things have gone and the words that have been said by Ryan Poles and everything like that, I don't know if you can bring Justin back because what if it's what if he just performs like well enough where you're like, yeah, maybe next year, then you're in the same situation. And it's just like, Justin, in my opinion, is not going to be dealing with that. So they're going to go Drake may number two to the Chicago bears at number three. So I think it's going to go QB here. And I think we're going to go Jaden Daniels. So a lot of, a couple things I've been hearing just from like Diana Rossini and, uh, even Rich Eisen on his shows, they're talking about the real possibility that quarterbacks can go one, two, three, four. Now, this is something we heard last year um, because of like Will Levis, and that obviously didn't happen. Levis fell to the second round, and it's all smoke right now, but we're going to go based off the chatter that's happening right now. So, we're going to have the Arizona Cardinals trading out with the Minnesota Vikings. We're going to have the Minnesota Vikings trading up. We're going to give them a pick swap. We're going to give them the fourth. And then we're probably going to give them a round one next year. And probably like a third next year. I don't know if this is the great compensation, but we're going to force this trade through. So now the Minnesota Vikings are on the clock, and they are going to take J.J. McCarthy. At number five, this is an interesting spot because... You have Marvin Harrison Jr. fall right into your lap. Now, do you want that? Or do you want to move back a little bit and take a tackle? Because there's probably going to be a team that's going to be willing to move up and go get Marvin Harrison Jr. And I think the reality is if Marvin Harrison Jr. is on the board. Sorry, it's my alarm. It's early. It's like 730 right now. But... um. If Marvin Harrison Jr. is on the board, who can want to who might want to come up and get him? Now, I think a possibility could be the Giants just swapping here just to get to secure Marvin Harrison Jr. But I think what I'm going to do is I yeah that's what I'm going to do actually. I'm just going to have the Giants pick swap for Marvin Harrison Jr. So maybe toss them like a fourth. We're going to offer that trade through. All right. So now they secure Marvin Harrison Jr. The Chargers get an extra pick, and they get Joe Alt. Okay, so this leaves Malik Neighbors and um, Romo Dunes on the board. So I'm going to go Rome, and then I'm going to go Malik Neighbors to the Falcons because <coughs> the reason I do this is because I am getting more and more of the sense that the Bears are not going to be picking at number nine. Um, yesterday, they traded for Ryan Bates, who is basically a depth piece for the interior line. They traded a fifth round pick, and now they only have five uh, picks left in this draft. And if, now I will say, if these receivers are not there, I have a feeling they're going to trade down. And I could also see if one of the quarterbacks or wide receivers is still there, they trade down anyway. So let's see where they could trade down to. They could trade down to 13. They could trade down to 20. Um, so I think maybe for value, 
we're going to have them trade down. So we're going to give them a fourth. We'll see. Like, I don't know if they're going to get that second round pick for that. They could get a third. So what we're going to do is we're going to force that trade through. Because I'm trying to think of who would come up right here. Hmm. Who would come up? I don't know who would come up. I really don't. I could I could see, you know what, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go Cincinnati Bengals, and we're going to trade up. And give us your third, and we'll give you the Philly fourth. I think that's a fair trade. So, okay, now the Bears are picking 18, which I think is a real possibility here. So, Bengals come on the board at 9. They're going to take Brock Bowers. At number 10, I think Oli Fushanu is, I don't know, hold on. I think they're, they're definitely going tackle here. But do they want Talese Fuaga or J.C. Latham? Because here's the thing is I heard some talk from the NFL Stock Exchange that they were hearing at the Combine that J.C. Latham could be projected as a guard in the NFL, which is surprising because that was what I originally thought Fuaga could possibly be. I'm not saying I wanted to move him to guard, but that's what I've feel like was talked about and they were saying they were hearing about jc latham which is interesting so the the jets could really go anyone here i don't know olu i think fuaga has probably a higher floor than olu but olu's ceiling is so high so i'm gonna go olu fashanu to the new york jets so this leaves the arizona cardinals in an interesting spot but i think taking byron murphy off the board here is a real easy pick at number 12, we went corner yesterday. I'm going to go Cooper to Gene um, just because pairing him next to Pat Sertan and his versatility is awesome. At number 13, we have the Las Vegas Raiders. Hmm. We can do a lot of things here. So, You could go corner. I've been having them go corner. I don't want to go them. I don't want to go O line here. You could give them an edge if Byron Murphy was there. That wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Let's see who has a trade. If they want to trade up. I don't really know who they take because um, there's going to be guys on the board for them. So I think what I'm going to have them do is I'm going to give them Terry and Arnold. I really like Terry and Arnold to the Raiders. I just think that's such a great place for him. At number 14, Talese Fuaga to the New Orleans Saints. Easiest pick in the draft outside of Caleb Williams, number one. At number 15, we have the Indianapolis Colts. And, you know, the Colts are really big on, like, RAS guys, on athletes, and that's why I think Wiggins is. But the more and more, like, I start to think about it, I'm going to do something a little bit crazy here. I know they're going to go corner, but I think with the way Brian Thomas Jr. performed at the Combine, putting Brian Thomas Jr. next to Michael Pittman and Josh Downs is kind of nuts. And if you want to build an offense around um, Anthony Richardson, I think that might be the way to go. So now we're sitting here at an interesting spot. Any three of these guys could go here. Any three of these guys. Or you could, you don't really need to go corner. I think because of the interior issue, I've had him go here three of the four mock drafts, but I just think it makes so much sense. Like, that's such a position of need. I know you need pass rush too, but that interior line was not good last year. Um, I'm going to go Quinion Mitchell to the Jacksonville Jaguars. So now we're at an interesting spot here because I think. The Bears, the Bears don't need corner. They have a good cornerback room, and they're going to re-sign uh, Jalen Johnson. Uh, at least that would be my guess. Now, you could also try to move down again and get draft capital, which I think wouldn't be the worst thing in the world because the Bears, now they have a lot of draft capital, though. I'm not going to do that again. So, I think I'm going to go Jared Verse to the Bears, and this is why. The Bears typically target fast, long, and very athletic guys, and that's what Jared Verse is. If you look at his combine numbers, I think he had like 31 bench press reps. 
um, kind of crazy. And to pair him with Montez Sweat and Gervon Dexter and whatever free agency addition they have will be nuts. At number 19, we have the Los Angeles Rams. Um, you know, there's a lot of areas you can go here. I think, you know, I don't necessarily love Nate Wiggins on the Rams. You could go one of the top two pass, um, <sighs> edge rushers here. Which, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give him Dallas Turner. And I keep having Dallas Turner fall. And I know he is such like a freak athlete. But at the end of the day, I don't think any of these edge rushers are like blue chip type players. And I think they have a real possibility of falling down the board. So at number 20, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, I think this is where I'm going to have Nate Wiggins go. Because I think you want to, you know, you're adding really good speed and really good athleticism to your secondary yes he's skinny could he put on 10 15 pounds yes he could but that's something that can be added in the nfl at number 20 we have the miami dolphins so i'm gonna do something a little crazy here ah uh, no i'm not gonna do it i was not gonna do that i was gonna add xavier worthy but I just feel like that's too much of a reach. It's too crazy. But could you imagine that speed with Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle? Imagine if they had a quarterback that could get them the ball, deep ball, that deep ball. All right. So we have Jatavian Sanders on the board. We have Graham Barton who can play anywhere on the interior. And we have Troy Fontana who can do the same. So, I've had them go there both times, though. So, I'm trying to look at a, a, another opportunity that we can do here. Let's, you know what? Let's go Jerzon Newton because they're going to lose Christian Wilkins um, to free agency. So, let's replace that interior rush right there. That's a good pick for them. Okay. So, now we have a very, very interesting spot here. Um, I don't really want to give them lot to because of the 3 4. And I don't want to give them a corner. I don't want to give them Kool-Aid. You could go interior here. I don't think that's the worst thing in the world. But I'm going to give them Peyton Wilson out of NC State because their linebacker play last year was horrible. At number 23 to the Houston Texans. Who should we give them? We have a lot of options here. We could look at the wide receivers. I don't necessarily love Troy Franklin. Keon Coleman be you know what? I'm gonna give them Adonai Mitchell. I feel like that would be a really cool addition to that Texans receiving room. And you're continually just giving CJ Stroud weapons to operate with. At number 24 to the Dallas Cowboys. You know what? Because this is a first round mock. Oh, dude, I want to do it so bad. So I think outside of the Dolphins, I think the Dolphins is just like a hype pick. But I really do think if you put Xavier Worthy next to C.D. Lamb on the Cowboys, that offense looks ridiculous. I don't know necessarily how high you want to rate that guy. I still think he has issues, and I still think he's a second-round pick. But it's very possible he goes at the end of the first. Now, I think there's a lot of other needs that they have, like Graham Barton or Troy Fontanu. So I am going to give them Troy Fontanu because of that versatility. At number 25, we have the Green Bay Packers. So here's the thing. They need interior. They don't necessarily need tackle. But I think... Because I've went safety here and I've went corner here the last two times. I think, in reality, there could be a tackle on the board like Amarius Mims, who they like a lot. So I'm going to go Amarius Mims to the Dream Bay Packers just to switch it up a little bit. At number 26, we have the Tempe Buccaneers. Latu Latu sitting right there is too easy for it. At number 27, pair J.C. Latham and Paris Johnson Jr. are too simple. At number 28, we have the Buffalo Bills. Now, this is interesting because we have two of the bigger receivers off the board. You could go Keon Coleman. I don't necessarily love him in the first round. You do need some O-line depth, though. 
And I know you shouldn't really be looking for depth in the first. So, but you know what? I know this is a weird pick, but let's go Zach Frazier. Because I know Ryan Bates was like their backup center. And I know Mitch Morris is kind of getting up there in years. So I think Zach Frazier would be an interesting pick to the Buffalo Bills. Sorry, I'm yawning all over the mic here. At number 29, we have the Detroit Lions. Now, Graham Barton sitting there perfect for them. They really need to fix that interior because both their guards are free agents. Now, I, I, I do think they'll probably bring one back, but I don't know if they'll be able to bring both back. At number 30, we have the Baltimore Ravens. So they need wide receiver, D-line, and corner. So we have an interesting board here. Um, I don't love Cooley McKinstry there. They don't need a safety. And it's Rakestra. Eh. Let's see what we're looking at wide receiver. Mm. I don't know if I love any of that. I mean, like, the only person I'd go here is Keon Coleman because of his size. And I think that gives a little bit of mix up. I think they do need a wide receiver because OBJ, it doesn't look like he's coming back. Mm. Give me TJ Tampa to the Baltimore Ravens. At number 31, we have the San Francisco 49ers. So, Tyler Guyton, I went there yesterday. I just think that's such an easy pick. So, I'm going to go with Tyler Guyton. At number 32, now I'm going to do the reach of Xavier Worthy to the Kansas City Chiefs. Could you imagine if they're able to get Xavier Worthy in that offense and it starts to cook? It's going to be like Tyreek Hill 2.0. If the defenses don't stop it, but this has been Mock Draft Madness Day 4. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you don't know ball and want to know ball, be sure to subscribe, leave a like. Let me know in the comments your favorite and least favorite pick from this mock draft, as well as trade scenarios that you want to see me try out. I will be back tomorrow with another mock draft. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day.